Okay, verse 24, chapter 1, verse 24. Paul says, Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people, to them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So let's go back. Remember, Paul has never been to Colossae, but he ministers to this congregation through certain people. He sends people there, and people come back to Paul, and so he's able to communicate, and through his writings. And he has just written these wonderful truths about Jesus we were talking about just a moment ago. And now in these verses, Paul is sharing his personal testimony of the change and the effect that Jesus has had and is having in Paul. And it's interesting that the first thing Paul says about the effect Jesus has had on Paul is that it led to Paul suffering. <laughs> um. If you are trying to lead somebody to Christ, okay, is the first thing you do say, now, this is going to cost you everything. This could mean somebody slashes your throat. This could mean somebody attacks your family. But let me tell you about Jesus. Is that the way you're going to approach it? Probably not, right? If you're trying to encourage another believer in Christ, are you going to say, let me tell you how much I've had to suffer for Jesus. Probably not. But that's exactly what Paul does here. That's what Paul does. And so the first thing he says about the effect Jesus has had on Paul is that it has led to Paul's suffering. And Paul seems to be saying here that his faithfulness to Christ and his ministry of reaching the Gentiles with the gospel has led to Paul enduring severe suffering. Now, think about what's going on with the Colossians. Why do you think Paul would say that to the Colossians? They might suffer too, right? And it's worth it. And it's worth it. Don't, don't be weak. Don't be wishy-washy. Take your stand and be firm in your stand. Don't allow yourself to be moved by the heretics. Okay, so he says, uh, it's cost me, but it's all right. And Paul says in these verses, he says that he was commissioned, he was drafted by God to serve the church by preaching the fullness of God's word. And he says here that the fullness of God's word is the message that the gospel is open to Gentiles. That was once a mystery, something not known, but now God has revealed it. Gentiles don't have to convert to Judaism before they can come to Christ. Through Jesus Christ, they have immediate access to God, salvation, and the church. 